I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about CSS naming conventions, jQuery plugins, fonts, and more. Let's check it out. First up is this really cool article over on the CSS Tricks blog called BEM101. Now, what is BEM? Well, it is an acronym that stands for B block, everything, man. Block element modifier. I was close. Actually, it's not an acronym. It's an initialism. Excuse me. What? There is a difference between the two. An acronym is something you can pronounce like scuba or radar. You can pronounce BEM. 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 Okay, sure. It could be an acronym, I guess. BEM, lawyered. Anywho, the block element modifier methodology is a way for naming your classes in HTML and CSS just so it's a little bit easier, actually a lot easier in some cases, to understand them. So when you're naming a new top level component or a block component, you would just name the class as you normally would. So here's a nice little button. And next, we have an element that depends upon that block. So in this case, you would use two underscores. So this might be an element that is a child of this block component. And we'll look at that in HTML in just a moment. And then you have this third type, which is a modifier, and that changes the style of the block. So let's say you have this button class, and you maybe want the button to be orange, or you want the button to be larger than some of the other buttons. So you have these classes here that modify the base component or the block component. So if we scroll down here, we can see this HTML example of what that might look like. So we have this button component, and then we have these two modifiers, and then we have these two child elements. And using this class naming methodology, it's really easy to understand how all of these classes relate to one another. So if you use this in your CSS and lots of other front-end developers and designers start to use it as well, it will start to get a little bit easier to understand how things are put together. So you can just immediately jump into their HTML or their CSS and understand what you can take out and what is really an essential component there that you need. So pretty cool stuff, yeah. pretty cool idea. I like uh, that a lot. Yeah, dig it. I don't have any puns for it, but still, good project. Next up, we have a project called selectivity.js. This is a modular and lightweight selection library for jQuery and Zepto.js. I know that because it says it in the header of the page. You're pretty clever. Was that? No, that, that was wasn't supposed a pun. to be a pun. No, that was literally just commentary. Oh, on your commentary. Gotcha. I yeah. thought I thought we were doing puns. No. Anyway, so here's some examples of this this selectivity library. Here is a uh, what would normally be a select dropdown, but this is styled. Ooh, look at that. So you can scroll down here. You can start typing things in. So if we want to filter by things just with the letter. Letters H and A, boom, okay, we got something selected. Oh, you don't want that? Click the X. All right, no, now we have nothing selected. Uh, if we want to select multiple cities, we can do that too. So here we got one, and then it comes up into a little tag, and we can delete those. Uh, and then you can also filter. So here we have filtering by country. And you can see here, this is the code that makes the selection happen. And then you can give it text, which is going to be a header, and then different children, and these are jQuery arrays. I'm um, sorry, these are JavaScript arrays, and this is a jQuery plugin. So here is the API. It is very simple to use. You can load things via Ajax, and then you can give it data. This is the initial selection data to set. You can also call dot data and get the current data back. You can give it an array of items, tons of different options here. Now, this plugin is very, very easy to use. And something that's interesting about it is since it works with jQuery or Zepto and it does not depend on the Sizzle library, it is a very small, very self-contained library. So if this is really all you need, just a little bit of selection on the page, maybe save your mobile users some bandwidth and make it load quicker. 
Anyway, you can find the link to that in the show notes right below this video. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is this wonderful prism effect over on the CoDrops blog. You ever been to prism? Uh, I can't say that I have. Sounds like you have some experience with that though. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this demo and let's get rid of this ad here just so you can see what's going on and I'm going to click on these and whoa, what? look at that. What wow. is happening? I have no idea. It's like we're seeing this through a, through a diamond. We are truly through the looking glass here, folks. So I'm going to click on this one and look at that, pretty cool. And let's look at this impossible cube. Seems kind of possible when you're looking at it that way. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it right here. It says impossible, and yet here we yes, are. Yes, here it is on this web page. So how is this being put together? Well, you can read all about that in this article here, but I'll give you a brief summary. Basically, what is happening is it's using SVG masks and a couple of different canvases. So we're actually looking at, I think, four different canvases here in this particular example. I have to look at the Chrome Dev Tools again. But basically, each one of those canvases is being masked using an SVG. So there's four different canvases all sandwiched on top of one another here. And then each one of those is only being shown in part by this mask here. So if you kind of look, I think this part of the image and this part is actually the same, maybe, uh, no, that's not quite right. But then through a couple of rotations and stuff, you get this effect that actually looks like a refraction of light coming through one of these transparent objects. So pretty clever idea. It's actually not as complicated as it sounds or as complicated as it looks, um, but it is a very nice effect. And to read more about that, you can check it out in the show notes. Next up, we have a plugin called X Editable. This is a jQuery and Bootstrap plugin. Uh, it works with Bootstrap, jQuery UI, or just jQuery. And this is for in-place editing of different elements on your page. So that sounds great. Why don't we just look at a demo of it? Uh, here we have the Bootstrap 3 form styling. And if we look at a simple text field right here, you can see it's underlined, and this kind of gives you a hint that you can click on it and edit it. So if I click on Super User, I now have the name uh, Editable kind of pops up here, and I can change it. So now I change it to Super User Nick, gives it a little highlight, and it is different on the page. Whoa. Now, this is an example of an empty text field. Hey, it's required. All right, I'll just enter some text there. Now, what's nice about this is that there are different option types here. So you can do drop downs, you can do a remote array. So this is fetching from an Ajax request here. And then there are date pickers, time pickers, pretty much anything you need. So here's a little time picker. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm not going to enter the whole thing right now. Uh, but there's even an option for type ahead. So if we st start typing F here, it preloads Florida. A lot of different options here depending on your needs. So if we look at the documentation here, it's very, very easy to use. Just make sure that you have either Bootstrap or jQuery in here, and then throw in the Bootstrap editable CSS and JavaScript file, and you are good to go. Then you just mark up your elements, give it a data type, a data primary key. This is going to be the ID on the server as well as a URL, and then you are good to go. You just need those few different attributes, and boom, you're pretty much done. Gives it the URL, do the post back for you. Uh, and there are, of course, a ton of different options. You have control over what is displayed, what's editable, what to put if something is empty, ways to handle errors, just tons of different options, which you can peruse at your leisure if you check this out in the show notes. Very cool stuff. Well, speaking of pickers, I have some hand-picked type from Google Fonts. Now, Google Fonts has over 650 fonts available for free, and you can use them on your web page. If you haven't checked out Google Fonts yet, definitely be sure to head over there. It's pretty amazing. But it can be difficult to discover and navigate all of the fonts that they have available. So 
this site just sort of curated some of them and put them together in nice combinations. So you can scroll down here and whoa, I feel like I'm on a different website already. And here's the two fonts that they used in this particular example. So that looks pretty nice. You can scroll down to a couple more here and see a few more examples. Ooh, I like that, the astronomer, that's pretty cool. Yeah, are we, in, are we in space? There's the two fonts that they used for that one. And I think you get the idea, but they have some really nice examples here. And like I said, there's a ton of fonts available on Google Fonts, and it can be pretty difficult to navigate them all and figure out what all is available. So it's nice that they have them put together here in a nice curated list. Yeah, you know, if you you know if you like them, great, use them. If not, you know, if maybe that's not your type, move on to a different font. Don't. We don't care. You know, we're not here to judge. You know, don't use them. Yeah. Or do. Whatever. Or don't. We're not the boss of you. That's all we have time for this week. I am at Nick RP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out the show notes right below this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week. Thank <music> you.